Welcome students to the new topic called as the consolidation of the soil. In the previous topics, uh, we have uh, studied that how the soil will behave under the application of the load uh, and that too we have considered the permeability characteristics and uh, seepage characteristics we have considered the homogeneity and we dealt with the anisotropy of the soil in the suspects and also we have uh, gone through all the index properties of soil which will help us to evaluate uh, the response of the soil under the application of various loading conditions so remember over here once you are loading a soil or once you are loading uh, any kind of a material it but obvious that the the material will undergo the strain and once the material is straining that means the material is deforming it will offer the resistance to deformation and that resistance uh, which is given by the material against deformation we call particular that value as the stress so remember because of the loads first the strengths will be developed and because of the strengths the stresses are developed so strengths are always an independent parameter and hence for uh, all convention analysis we plot the strengths on the x axis these strengths may be the axial strengths may be the shear strengths or may be the distortion angle which is caused because of the shear forces so uh, and, and on the y axis we will be plotting the values of stress and uh, if you take uh, any engineering material maybe a concrete or steel you will get the response of the stress strain uh, curve initially you will get as it has a straight line and thereafter it will reach the value of a uh, upper yielding point and then a lower yielding point then a softer response or then probably due because of the reorientation you will get the increased strength of the material and after reaching ultimate value it ultimately breaks over this point so B is the breaking point so we saw this kind of the particular curve for ductile uh, mild steel so this is for ductile materials which go on continuously straining while uh, developing the internal resistance against deformation so this ductile material uh, example is mild steel and if you compare it with the concrete which is kind of a brittle response so this is for the concrete for brittle material maybe the concrete or maybe the cast iron there are uh, various engineering materials and you will uh, you have seen such kinds of the response of the material under the application of load so it is so I'll write over here that under the application of load soil will go on straining till failure till failure but what happens in most of the cases as far as the soil is concerned so if you draw particularly the stress strain curve for obviously uh, I, I, I'll hear discussing only the axial stresses and axial strains so the soil will uh, go on straining and straining straining but it will not fail so here for such kinds of uh, material which is for uh, loose sand or for uh, I, I call it as a normally consolidated place we will see such kinds of the stress strain response in the shear strength of the soil chapter and for the dense it's like this one this is for a dense sand or uh, over consolidated clay so this OCC means uh, over consolidated clay
and NCC means normally consolidated clay. So the behavior of the soil depends upon the type of the loading first and also the behavior of the soil again depends upon the nature of the soil or the soil type of the soil which is encountered in the field and also it depends on the uh, boundary conditions. So we'll uh, go uh, and see how they will going to affect into the properties of the soil first. Uh, it is very very important which is nothing but the soil type. So as we have uh, seen that particularly in case of uh, clay deposit uh, we have got the solids and uh, clay is uh, almost in all uh, general cases it is fully saturated and uh, once you apply a uh, load it to a clay soil then uh, since the solid part is uh, incompressible the volume change will not occur into the solid the volume change uh, will occur only in case of the voids so it will happen because of the movement of water or I call it a movement of pore water from its structure and this is happened because of the load so very very important this movement of the pore water has happened because of the load how it has happened see in order to have in order to have the movement of the pore water or for a seepage we must we have studied that it is must for us to generate a difference in the total head then and then only the flow will going to happen see the water is moved that means the flow has occurred so to occur a flow there has to be a hydraulic gradient so that hydraulic gradient is generated because of the application of the load so this particular soil type will depend so the particularly in case of the clays this particular volume change whatever will be happening because of the load is a time dependent process so if I just draw a graph of the time on the x-axis I, I, I'll use the log scale over here because the it's a time dependent process it will continue for a period of the months or even years so here 10, 10 raised to 2, 10 raised to 4, 10 sorry 10 raised to 3, 10 raised to 4 minute and uh, if I analyze and if I take it's uh, the small sample of the clay and if I test it in a laboratory and if I just uh, get this on, on the y-axis as the compression but and it is obvious that the compression of the voids only because I am assuming that the solids are uh, incompressible so there will no, won't be any kind of the reduction in the volume of the solids so over here is a 0% 20% so like that here is 100% the compression will go on decreasing with respect to time for a, quite a long period of the time as far as this clay is concerned because this happens only because of low coefficient of permeability so very very important as far as this graph is concerned we have got the slope of the curve which is gradually decreasing that means the rate is gradually decreasing and once you apply the load what happens there will be a generation of the excess hydrostatic pressure which will lead to a flow condition and that particular flow condition will refer to it as a transient flow condition so I'll repeat again so if you got the uh, clay particles like this beneath the ground so let's suppose this is the ground level 
this is above is the uh, let's 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 uh, let's consider the clay sandwiched bet between the rock and the sand layers. This is the clay. So if you are not applying the load, there won't be any kind of movement in the water. So because of the application of the load, this particular load will cause the generation of excess hydrostatic pressure. So initially I considered the water table to be at the ground level. So this is particularly the ground level. So once you apply a load, there will be a generation of excess hydrostatic pore water pressure. I will call it, it as excess uh, hydrostatic, excess hydrostatic pore water pressure. So because of the generation of this much amount of uh, excess hydrostatic pressure, it will lead to a flow condition and uh, that particular flow we call it as a transient flow. And transient flow meaning that the flow property uh, will be varying with respect to the pore water pressure which is generated because of the application of the load. So remember this load has to be a static and that too long term. So once you are placed and you are removed, it doesn't make any sense. So this particular the movement of the water or the generation of the pressure will quickly dissipate and once the pressure has been dissipated, there won't be any kind of the flow condition and there won't be any kind of the movement in the, in the soil mass. So it depends on the type of the soil. So if I just compare the same graph uh, with the uh, sandy soil, you will get the response like this. This is for sand. So in sand, the volume change will quickly occur because of the high coefficient of the permeability. So if you recollect the coefficient of permeability, that's what we have seen it in the permeability of the soil chapter for the clays it will be in the order of 10 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter per second while in case of the sands or the coarse grain soil it, it, it will be likely to be in the range of 0.001 to 0.1 meter per second sorry uh, centimeter per second that's what we have seen it in the uh, permeability of the soil chapter so the volume change again will depend on the type of the soil that was the first statement second uh, part which is influencing the volume change behavior of the soil is nothing but the loading conditions and we have seen the how the loading condition will affect the generation of the pore water pressure and also uh, the load has to be a static and that to a long term uh, in order to contribute to the generation of the pore water pressure and that will eventually lead to the condition of flow flow condition uh, repeat so that will eventually lead to a transient flow condition uh, so we have seen the load to be a static and that to a long term which is contributing this phenomenon called as a change in the volume and third very very important uh, phenomenon will be the nothing but the boundary condition how the boundary condition will affect see uh, initially uh, i'll case i'll consider a clay, case where the clay is uh, sandwiched in between the two pervious uh, layers a pervious layer may be a sand or the fractured rock pervious layer of either a sand or fractured rock and uh, you see uh, once you uh, apply a, a load which will uh, generate the excess hydrostatic pore water pressure and because of the excess hydrostatic pore water pressure the water in the clay so remember uh, whatever clay I am drawing, drawing it in the figure, which means aquiclude, uh, 
because if you recollect it is in permeability chapter it is like c c clay clay you have to match and aquic fluid strata contains the water but they cannot yield the water because of the less coefficient of permeability in the order of 10 raised to minus 14 that's what we have seen in the permeability chapter so once you apply a load so the water particle will try to go it into a sand layer and the pressure that's what which is generated because of the load will be slowly dissipating so whatever uh, the thickness of the clay layer is there i'll consider the midway of the thickness so this will be the edge by 2 and this will be the edge by 2 so the water particle which is present here will try to go upside and similarly the water particle which is here will try to go downside and will try to dissipate all of its energy by going it into a sandy layer and the sand since it is a freely drainage available in the sand it can move along with the force of the gravity so this is how uh, the volume in the clay will be decreased which will eventually lead to the surface settlement so if you plot the surface settlement uh, graph it would uh, something look like this so the area where the load has been applied you will experience a more amount of the settlement if you have got the clay which is deeply buried it into a ground so this has this has got the very very serious uh, limitation as far as geotechnical engineering is concerned because the load is uh, practically imposed by the structures so you don't allow the structure with, which uh, undergoes a very very high amount of the settlement because it creates a problem to as far as the serviceability limit state of serviceability is concerned so you're not uh, allow the very large amount of the settlement to be experienced by the building or the structure that's what uh, we are planning to have it on the ground so as far as uh, possible what uh, will do it once you encounter a clay strata uh, will initially load it by an excessive amount of the load that which is imparted by the structure and because of under the application of that particular excessive load will allow the consolidation to happen and once the consolidation has happened the shear strength properties even the uh, compressibility of properties of the soil will be improved and uh, this will eventually lead to the less amount of the settlement which is uh, permissible by the Indian standard course and uh, will uh, proportion and design the foundation accordingly. So uh, this uh, finishes the broad introduction of the consolidation chapter. Uh, we'll go for this particular uh, kind of the settlement which is experienced by the building under the application of the load. If you encounter uh, different types of the soil like suppose a clay and sands. So what would be this settlement? and uh, how you how you can uh, evaluate uh, this particular settlement under the application of the load so that's how the basic motto of the this particular chapter which is a consolidation will go and see in the next videos the settlement and its types uh, thank you